Does hyperbaric oxygen actually help people fight mold and candida infections? Or, as I've seen posted online many times, that hyperbaric oxygen actually feeds candida and feeds mold and can make that infection worse. That's what we're going to cover in today's video. So to effectively cover this conversation, I'm going to discuss four main areas. The first is the antimicrobial effect that hyperbaric has in certain situations. I'm going to cover the immune activation component of hyperbaric. Next, we'll go into the ability of hyperbaric to help decrease toxin release from microorganisms. So there's a toxin inhibition component to hyperbaric oxygen. And then lastly, we'll talk about other adjunctive therapies that you definitely want to be combining when utilizing hyperbaric as part of an antifungal or anti-mold or anti-candida type protocol. And weaved throughout the video will be a topic that I see posted all over the internet, which is, does high pressure or low pressure matter? Is it high pressure required in order to fight these infections? And does low pressure actually fuel candida and mold and make it worse? So I really want to make sure that we answer that question throughout this video. So first, we're going to talk about the antimicrobial property of hyperbarics. As a result of the hyperbaric environment and this higher pressure and higher percentages of oxygen, we are creating exceptionally high pressures of oxygen, or PO2. In many cases with infection, the higher PO2 by itself is enough to help suppress the growth of some of these microorganisms and, in fact, even kill some of these microorganisms. Specifically, when it comes to the antimicrobial effect of hyperbaric, though, these need to be anaerobic. So these have to be microorganisms that do not thrive in a normal oxygen or higher than normal oxygen level environment. And within the mold family, certain species are aerobic, meaning they do live in a normal or higher than normal level of oxygen. And of course, it's the anaerobic species that would be most susceptible to this antimicrobial high oxygen environment. So does that mean if you have an aerobic version of a mold or candida that this isn't going to work for you? Not necessarily. That takes us to the next topic. The next topic is the immune activation component of hyperbaric oxygen. It's very well understood that this increased level of oxygen, this hyperbaric environment, has a variety of different effects on our immune system. We know that it reduces inflammation, and we also know that it increases our immune system's ability to fight infection. That includes our ability to fight viral infection, bacterial infection, and also mold infections. So even though your version of this candida or this version of mold for you is an aerobic species, I would still tell you that the benefits of the hyperbaric environment increasing your own immune system's ability to fight infection is certainly going to outweigh any additional oxygen that we may be delivering to that mold species and potentially supporting it or fueling it in any way. There is also evidence to support the fact that both mild pressures and higher pressures is able to create this immune activation of our immune system. I've seen posted online numerous times where people are saying that if you don't use high pressure, not only are you not going to be killing the mold, but you're actually going to be feeding the mold and you're going to make the infection worse. And I think that that's inhibiting people from actually taking the step to utilize this technology. Now, there are two really important concepts that I would want to discuss when I see something like that said or posted. The first is, like I said earlier, we know that lower pressures activate the immune system and improve our ability to fight infection. And I've never seen any research to support the idea that lower pressures fuel these species' growth or would make the infection worse. And in 20 years of clinical experience, I've never seen lower pressures make a mold situation worse for somebody. We'll get right back to the video in a minute. I just wanted to quickly share that the hyperbaric textbook that Dr. Joe DeTore and I have been working on for the last 18 months is finally available and ready for order. As most of you know, I've been teaching and certifying people in hyperbaric medicine for the last few years, and I have felt like what was missing was a concise book to describe everything that we cover in our courses. Is it a substitute for the course? Absolutely not. Is it a great addition to the course? Definitely is. And if you can't get to one of our courses yet, is it a great place to really jumpstart your hyperbaric education? Yes, absolutely. So just click the link in the description below and grab your copy today. The second topic that I would want to cover is some people can't handle the higher pressure due to detox symptoms and Herxheimer reactions. And so almost exclusively throughout somebody's journey, we're going to start at lower pressures anyway. One, because we know it's going to reduce inflammation. Two, because we know it's going to start supporting their system and improve the immune system activation. But three, we're pre-treating them to potentially handle higher pressures as we go. There are a lot of people who might go from, I've never been in a hyperbaric chamber to higher pressures, resulting in a tremendous increase in their symptomatology, and so they discontinue the treatment because they felt worse afterwards. If we just go slow and start at lower pressures, and as they can tolerate it, 
build it up higher, we could still be getting a tremendous amount of improvement throughout that process. And they may not even need those higher pressures. By the time they have enough sessions under their belt, their immune system might be operating at a level such that we don't need to push any harder than we already have. The third topic is toxin inhibition. We know very well that hyperbaric has the ability to suppress the growth of different organisms. There's been some research even specifically on mold and the suppression of growth of mold in this hyperbaric environment. As a result of suppressing the growth of this mold, we're also reducing the amount of toxins that those microorganisms can release. Typically, it's not the organism itself that we're reacting to, it's the toxins that those organisms release as part of their growth and replication inside of our body. So in order to help somebody fight the infection and feel better throughout that journey, toxin inhibition could be a major component of getting through this quickly, effectively, and with less symptoms along the way. Lastly, I just wanna bring up that in all cases, even with an anaerobic infection where the oxygen environment would help kill the microorganism and we would have this immune activation that would help our own immune system fight the infection, and we have this toxin inhibition component of hyperbaric, even with those infections, I would still say hyperbaric is not designed to be used alone to fight mold or to fight candida. Let alone, of course, if we're talking about one of the aerobic species, hyperbaric certainly should not be used alone. In our offices, if we're dealing with somebody with a mold or candida issue, we're gonna be using nutritional changes like a very low sugar, low carbohydrate diet, potentially even using ketosis and fasting as a piece of their protocol. We're also gonna be using supplementation, antimicrobials, antifungals, a range of different supplements that we're gonna rotate periodically to make sure that we're using ingredients that legitimately will help kill that microorganism. We also may use additional supplements that will work synergistically with the immune activation component of hyperbaric. So certain ingredients that increase our own immune system's ability to fight infection. Additionally, if you happen to have access to a few other tools, we will also utilize high dose vitamin C IV periodically. And occasionally we also use IV ozone due to its antimicrobial properties as well. So if you're combining dietary changes, antimicrobial supplementation, immune activation supplementation, and hyperbaric oxygen, this is gonna be a very full and complete protocol in order to get somebody through this mold or fungal infection. So hopefully this helps answer some questions around, is it appropriate to utilize hyperbaric oxygen with mold or candida or fungal infections? And if you want any more additional information about ozone, we also made a video on ozone therapy and the differences between hyperbaric and ozone. So if you're interested in that, you can watch that video over here.